Uh, hi, good evening. So today we discuss about our data structures. So last time we have discussed uh, what is a data structure and uh, like how, what is the importance of data structures. So, and what, now we just uh, discuss about briefly more about into that one. So coming to the data structures, what is, an, a data, uh, what is the difference between data structure and an algorithm? So algorithm is nothing but a step-by-step -step process of how we solve a problem. So data structure also is solving a different kind of problem and uh, an algorithm also will solve a different kind of problem. So an algorithm, it's just like a, uh, we can uh, mention it as a computer programming terms where we will uh, uh, write all the steps involved to solve a problem. And data structure is like to solve that particular problem, how we gonna arrange the data. So it's like any problem that we are gonna solve, we have to store the data. So like yesterday we have discussed about uh, uh, student program where we store our library program or anything like that, where we store all students data and where we store all library, uh, books data in a library, library management system like that. So we have to store that particular data. So like uh, we, uh, as we discussed, uh, we have struct. So if we, we go with variables, If you go with variables, we can store either only one kind of data like int, float, double or string, char. Like this, we can store only one kind of data and only we can store in a one variable like data type and variable name. And we can store either only any, any of this data type, kind of data we can store only in one variable. So what if like now I want to store 100 uh, people data, like 100 more uh, more than 100 or more than 1000 like that, uh, data or more than 1000 variables if I want to create, instead of creating 1000 variables, we will go with array. Where the same kind of data, instead of saving in single variable, we can store n number of data. in a single variable. So here we can store like uh, zero to n number of data we can store. But here also we can store either only one data type, not multiple data types. So to solve this problem, we have struct in uh, C language, class in Java, where we can store multiple uh, data types as a single unit like int, again, I can instruct here, float all together, we can store in a single object that is as a single variable. Struct student information like that, I can keep and I can give the name, S1, like this. So here I will have this collective data stored. I can create an array also for this one. Means I can store n number of student data, which is having all these values together. Okay, these all are like different uh, ways of storing data. So now we now we understood like how to store the data, but how to access this particular data. So to access the data, we should store it somewhere, right? So we are storing like assume like we are. Uh, having a array here. But the problem with array is like, we should know the size of it. And we should know, and there is one more catch. If we declare like thousand, if I declare, thousand student, if I declare, but I use like only 10 student data, remaining 998 bytes of memory, that which is game, game, being allocated in the RAM is being wasted. Means, what is the array syntax? Data type, variable name, and this size. So here, if I, when we declare int 
or any data type a like this variable name so here we are allocating four bytes of data for a single variable array is nothing but storing n number of data type values in a single uh, unit means whatever the n here we have declared that much data it is being allocated in the memory so when when we don't know the number like what is like so it, like i have student information i have that which i want to store and access but i don't know the number that how many i can get so i can get 1 2 5 10 or 1000 so dynamic memory allocation is not possible in array array is non dynamic and it cannot so like now i have 1000 i have declared uh, assume like i have declared array 1000 so tomorrow uh, there might be a requirement where i want to increase the array size that i cannot do in runtime so it is non growable so we cannot uh, so the size of uh, so the when we check the drawbacks of this one there will be loss of memory that which is being assigned and there is wastage of memory and it cannot grow dynamically and uh, it we cannot increase the size uh, in between once we declare 1000 or 100 that's the final we cannot change the array size uh, whenever we want it okay so this, these are the limitations of arrays and that's why we need a data structure which is more efficient than array which stores our data and allows uh, gives us some uh, actions on top of the data that which we can perform like on every data that which we store we should perform some operations like storing deleting traversing and everything we should do that one so to uh, allow uh, to modify and uh, what kind of operations that we can do and what are the different kinds of data structures that we have so let's check everything now so coming to data structures it can be divided into multiple ways like how it stores in memory uh at how like how it stores in memory if it is storing like if you see array it is stored in a linear fashion means it is stored in consecutive memory locations so that's why we call it as a linear data structure so coming to data structure it can be mainly divided into two kinds one is linear other one is non-linear in linear we have static again in this we have dynamic static in a sense array because the size of this one is doesn't grow so this already we have seen array is a linear and static data structure means it is it it is static in nature it doesn't grow or do anything changes to it one so while, while coming to dynamic data structures we can subdivide can be subdivided into linked list stack So these all are dynamic only, but why different name we have given here? Because the way of uh, accessing this particular elements is differ each one. So here, stack is like uh, before, first come, first serve. Whoever comes uh, like uh, linked list will store dynamically in a linear fashion. So to, if you want to access this element, we have to come from starting itself. So while stack will store uh, like the, uh, it performs like this means whichever comes first, that will be popped out first. So we are like uh, last in first out. We call it as LIFO. Whoever comes last means this one came first, second, third, 
and it came forth. But now if you want to access the stack uh, data structure, so it will give me only the last element out. This we call as LIFO, while as Q will be like FIFO, first in, first out. It's standard Q structure. Whoever comes in Q first, they will get be accessed. So this is how, these all are all dynamic in nature. We don't need to define the size of them. It will grow based on the number of uh, requests we add, based on the size, uh, it will grow dynamically. And it will create the data, uh, it will allocate memory in data, sorry, it will allocate memory in RAM whenever it is required. It's not like we have to predefine uh, the memory in a RAM like that, it's not required. While coming to the nonlinear data structure, we have tree and we have graph. These trees and graphs are like highly important uh, ones. So if you remember like whenever you open a LinkedIn or Facebook, you have you assumed uh, this is your uh, account. So you have your friend account. Multiple friends. So these friends also have multiple friends for them. The clever algorithm of this trees one is, and graph one is, so you might see recommendations from your friends' friends list. This is scanning through this, like this. And it is recommending you some of the friends who are like common friends between your friend and the other friends like this. So like these operations can be performed in tree and graphs by using. And if you see here, if you store it in a linear fashion, you might not able to achieve this kind of uh, recommendation system. If you store in a, like, uh, if, you are a, if you assume like your account is A and your friend account is F, and your friend is having some 100 uh, friends list. Okay. And you have some 100 friends, F1, F2. So this one, if you see, this one is like more clear. But if you store it in linear fashion, it will be like um, whatever this entire thing, again, it should be stored in your friends list. Like your number of friends. F1, F2, F3, and so on, Fn. You will have only your friend list, and your fr you cannot access your friends, uh, friends again. That will be individual to to that particular friend only. So, by using these trees and graphs, you can access inter friends uh, like recommendation uh, system. Everything we can achieve. So this one. While going forward, uh, time permits, we can see. Let's say some PPTs now. So earlier we discussed about array, right? Like uh, how an array stores memory. Uh, it's not a, when you declare an array, uh, this is how it will be stored in um, When, we, when memory is allocated uh, dynamically, a block of memory is assigned arbitrarily from any location in the memory. But in this array location, it is uh, stored in consecutive memory locations. Assume this is the index. 
zero one two three and one zero is the one zero zero one zero two is are like a uh, um, memory addresses. So and here it is ten elements it is stored and we have to declare uh, it's a, each in stack we have to declare uh, each uh, for each data for each index we have to store the data in the stack means we have to store nearly 40 bits of data like 4 into 10 now if you assign uh, uh, coming to the linked list if you assign dynamically so if it is not consecutive if you see here we have 1002 here 1008 like this we are storing in different different locations it is not contiguous so but if you store like this uh, so if you like earlier if you see in array, we stored in a continuous fashion, and we know exactly what is the next number. Because if we declare array 10, we can traverse it easily. Like we know what will be, we can, to access that particular array elements, we can access directly like array 0, array 1, array 2, array 3, like that. Based on the variable index, we can easily access and traverse through the array location. But if we store it dynamically in multiple positions, but now we have stored, assume like we have stored in multiple different different positions but now we don't know how to traverse if we store dynamically in different locations of the memory so there should be a connection between them like this so two is the data and the next element is stored in 1036 and here three is the data the next element is stored in 108 five 1020 means we should be storing two elements in such a way that we should store our data as well as the next address of the next element that which where our next data element is going to point and store. By that, it, we can be easily traversed. That we call it as a linked list. So for this one, we should declare a start from, because uh, if you see earlier, we don't know which is the start, right? It can start from uh, anywhere and it can go like uh, in any different location. So it should be, as we told, linked list is a linear data structure. Means it should have a start. So from that start notation, from the start point, we will access the linked list. Coming to the features of the linked list, a linked list is a dynamic data structure, allows memory to be allocated as and when it is required. Consists of chain of elements in which each element is required as a node. So let's see the, what exactly a node is. A node is a basic building block of a linked list. As I told earlier, if you store in data in an array, we can easily access through the index numbers. That's where the next element is stored. Coming to linked list, we don't know the next element. We don't have the mechanism like an array. So we should store the next, we should store some address pointer where by that we can identify where to go next. Means if I stored now five elements in a linked list, how to access? How to access those five elements? Because it is randomly stored in a memory location. To access that one, so it, those five elements should be interlinked. That's how that can be achieved by using a node. So node is nothing but data and the address of the next element that which we are uh, storing. Data refers to the information held by the node. Link holds the address of the next node in the list. So the data in link list will be stored in this fashion. Every node in a linked list has a link field that stores the address of the next node in a sequence. By this, I'm not able to write on this PPT. So, and now we have start point. We will start from 2403 and until we will traverse until when we should traverse. So for that one, we should have some notation, right? Where the linked list will exit. For that one, we should store the last element of the linked list with a null. Means the, the link, whichever we are defining, that we make it as a null. By that, whenever we 
encoder NL means we have reached the end of the linked list. So we should keep a start. So that's what a linked list, uh, how it is. So here, if you can see, it is a singly linked list. What's the meaning of singly linked list? So it can store only one data. And each node points to the next node. And the last node points to the null. That we call it as a singly linked list. So this is the algorithm of that one. Let's uh, see some notes. Let me open this board. It got stuck. Let me pause sharing. In linked list, we should store the elements like this. Where the main building block of linked list is node. So in node, if no data is present, we call it as a empty list or empty linked list. That is an empty node. So here we store the data and here we store the link that which points to the like uh, now I have, uh, I want to store 10, 20, 30, 40 elements in a linked list. So to, to do that, first I should start, I should create a node. So I will store 10 and here the address will be null because this is a starting element and I will make this as a start. And next I will try to add 20 to this uh, linked list. So then I will create a node. I will add data to that one. I will make link, uh, the link will be null because the, no, there is no element for that. So, and start here, I will add the address of this element to here. Now there is a link between them. So if you see here, this is not bidirectional, it is unidirectional means I have linked list with the data 10. This I will make it as a start. Whenever I added a element, new element, I will add the ad address into this one. So now this, will, this link will point to this new node. Whenever I want to add 30, I will create, a th I will add 30. And this address, I will be linked to here. And as usual, the last, every time, if you remember, the every time whenever I insert, that element address will be null, and the data will be inserted into that one, and I will point this to the previous uh, one. So if you see, I in a linked list, I can always traverse from here only, because from start only I can traverse, because from start only I have the linkage. Uh, assume like uh, we are standing, uh, holding our hands together. So whenever, uh, so whenever there is a link, uh, he, this person unholds the hands between these two them, then these two will hold the hands. It's like a chain process. So each one will be holding hands. So here it is unidirectional only. It is not, we cannot, we can traverse from always from start only. 
So to solve this problem, we have a circular link list. In link list again can be divided into three types. Singly linked list, LL linked list, and uh, double linked list, and circular linked list. Single list already we have seen. Now let's see double linked list. So let's uh, see single link list in the programmatic way. So as I told in singly linked list, the main building block is a node. Node is nothing but struct node. We should have two elements, right? One is data and other one is link to the next element. So we add data type. Data and uh, struct node address of the next element. This is the main building block of the link list. One more time, I'm writing struct node. We are defining a struct of name node which holds the data and the address of the next element. Okay. So the how linked list will be stored in a linear fashion. We will always have a head or start. This one we will mention as head. Data. And the next element. Data and the next element data and the next element. So here for the last element, it will be always null. This is how singly linked list will be represented. And now coming to double linked list, how it will be. So if you see the previous in linked list, it is unidirectional means I if like uh, I have to traverse from always from start to the end. So if I know the address of this element, I cannot access its previous or its front. So again, I have to traverse from all the way from the head. So it is like uh, even though I know the address of the middle element or the last element, I cannot uh, start from there. I always have to start from the head. It is unnecessary timing is uh, wasted. But to solve that problem, so we can uh, come up with a new solution. We call it as a W link list. So W link list, main thing is the difference between single link list and uh, W link list is in singly link list, we will be having only the next element means the node of singly linked list always knows or always has the idea or uh, it always uh, knows the information of the next element. It doesn't know the previous element of it. But in W linked list, it will be having previous. It, it has the idea of the previous element also. It has the information of the previous. So this is the, uh, the node in the link list, W link list will be like this, which is having data, information of the next element, and information of the previous element also. These three are the main things that we'll be having in the W link list.
so the data will be stored in such a way it it, it is like bidirectional either you can traverse from the end or you can traverse from the middle or anywhere so data previous and next so single linked list will be like unidirectional data previous and next okay same as linked list we call it as the head or start and in the end for this also it should be null and here for the head it should be null the previous will be null because there is no elements uh, prior to this and there is no elements after this one so in this kind of scenario we call it as a dumbly linked list so now there is a uh, how we uh, present this in a code same like stringly linked list we have struct node which is having data data type data and uh, address of the next one address of the previous one these three are mandatory so there is one more catch uh, in doubly linked list we can try we can start from any address location and we can either go for this direction or traverse for this direction from here also if i get the address i can go in any direction but either i can start from start or end you know it's like uh, one direction only it will be having so even though it is bidirectional uh, it's we don't have full control over this one because once we reach the end, if I want to come back again from start, I have to start from all over the start again. Okay. So the advantage of double linked list is either I can go forward or backward. So to solve this, pro there is one more problem as I told. Uh, it would don't have like full control. We cannot uh, every time we have to come from start or every time I have to come from the end. To know that one, every time I have to store the information and I have to come back and again and again. So to solve this problem, we have one more uh, linked list, which is called as W uh, circular linked list. The features of circular link list is it can either be a single link list or double link list. Means it is a collection of both single and double link list. So how we traverse here? Same like W linked list, we'll be having a previous and a like this. But at the end, so usually we store null, right? For the end one. Here, instead of storing null, we store the first element address. Means it will be in a uh, circular format. So from anywhere, we can traverse easily. Let's see some animations now on this one to be like uh, more clear. Uh, please stop recording. <laughs> 